Writer James Foster and his wife M are on vacation at the seaside country of Lee Talca. Problems have long arisen in their marriage, and one of the reasons for this is James's creative crisis. The annual festival, dedicated to the rainy season is approaching. It is celebrated with traditional music and feasting. Usually people dress up in traditional masks and costumes and paint symbols on their faces. James hoped that the trip to Lee Talca would bring back his inspiration, but so far it hasn't helped much. M suggested going on a boat tour today and then having dinner in the city, but James said he couldn't bear another dinner in the city. So M decided to go without him. Later on the beach, James and the others watched as a local man rode his quad bike along the beach, frightening tourists. Not all locals like that so many foreigners come to Lee Talca. A woman approached James and struck up a conversation with him, expressing admiration for his book. Currently this is James Foster's only published novel. The woman introduced herself as Gabby Bauer. She's here with her husband Alvin. The couple invited James to join them for dinner. James accepted the offer, and in the evening the company dined at a Chinese restaurant. Of course Sam was here too. Alvin mentioned that he used to be an architect but now runs a newspaper in Los Angeles. Gabby on the other hand is an actress appearing in commercials. She demonstrated her acting skills to the new acquaintances and then casually mentioned that she's been waiting for James's second book for 6 years. He evasively replied that he's working on the book but doesn't know when it will be published. Now James doesn't have a steady source of income, so their family is mostly supported by M. She jokes about it, but it's evident that she's actually tired of it. James drank heavily, feeling his consciousness blur. The next day, the spouses were going to join the Bowers on a trip out of town. M thinks it's a bad idea because tourists are not allowed to leave the resort. Lee Talca is a poor country where crime thrives. James didn't take her concerns seriously since the Bowers come here every year, so it must be safe with them. M guessed that James was just glad to have found his fan club. Renting a car, the group headed out of town. Finding a beautiful spot near a clear lake, they lit a bonfire and roasted sausages. Suddenly Alban asked M why she married James if he has no money. M replied that it was because of her father. As the owner of her own publishing house, he didn't want his daughter to marry a writer. So M did it to spite her father. When James stepped away, Gabby approached him from behind, and without asking for his consent performed actions that only a wife could perform. They didn't exchange a word with each other. It was getting dark. Everyone was very drunk, but James still got behind the wheel, claiming he was the soberest. James didn't notice a person on the road and didn't break in time. At first James was in shock, then got out to check. There was nothing more that could be done to help this man. Alban and M panicked. M was barely holding back hysteria. James suggested calling the police, but Gabby insisted they shouldn't. Lee Talca is an uncivilized country. The locals are very cruel. Ending up in a Lee Talca prison is the worst thing that could happen. And the local authorities certainly wouldn't bother figuring out who among them was guilty. Alban found the wife's words reasonable. In the end M and James gave in, agreeing to simply leave the scene. The remaining journey passed in silence. The gates leading to the resort were closed. Alban explained to the guards that they supposedly were at a nightclub, but then got lost and accidentally exited the premises. Tourists are not allowed to leave the resort, but when Alban and James showed their key cards, all four of them were let in. James felt physically unwell. After that, the Bowers and the Fosters parted ways. The next morning, there was a knock on the door. At the threshold stood policemen who arrested James. M also had to go with her husband. She was on the verge of a panic attack. The officers didn't answer their questions. The spouses were taken to the police station and separated. James was forced to change into a white shirt and locked in a shabby room. After a while, Detective Irel Tresh came and reassured James, assuring him that his wife was okay. Detective Tresh's uncle Dro works at the resort, and yesterday James and his company rented a car from him. If this is true, Dro will have problems. The detective told James that he would be grateful if he kept this fact secret. For James it won't change anything but he agreed to fulfill Tresh's request. The detective began the official interrogation, recording everything on audio. It turned out that it was the Bowers who reported to the police, claiming that James stole a car from Dro Tresh. The victim of yesterday's incident was farmer Myro Meyer. According to the detective, M has already confirmed that her husband left the crime scene without calling the police. Irel Tresh also explained that according to the laws of Lee Talca, the eldest son of the victim must take the life of the perpetrator, even if it was an accident. This is the only way to protect the family's honor. If there is no son, the state carries out the execution. But Myro had two sons, 9 and 13 years old. James couldn't say anything out of shock. Then Irel Thrash told him about the law of doppelgangers for foreigners. For a large sum of money, the state will create a clone of the accused, which will replace the original at the execution. The key point of the deal, the clone would contain all the original's memories. Almost without understanding anything, 
James signed the contract, thereby consenting to the cloning process. When the detective left, James burst into tears. Later, James withdrew money from the ATM. Of course it was his wife's money. After the formalities were settled, James was taken to the laboratory, where scientists collected samples of his genetic material and performed all the necessary procedures. James was led into a cramped room filled with some kind of liquid. The cloning process began, during which James saw surreal images flashing through his mind. When James woke up, the wife was beside him. They were still at the police station. James had a terrible headache. M said the doppelganger had turned out, so the worst was over. The couple immediately went downstairs. M and James saw his doppelganger for themselves. The detective said that it often takes several attempts because even the slightest differences are unacceptable by law. James was shocked because the man in front of him was his exact copy. Tresh said that by law, the original must be present at the execution. Suddenly the clone regained consciousness, causing M to become hysterical. The couple was taken away. It was time for the execution. James and M were among those present. Myro Meyer's eldest son was preparing to defend his family's honor, while James's clone pleaded with him not to do it and called for help. Hearing this, M could barely contain herself. The boy did what he had to. James found it strange to witness the demise of his exact copy, but unlike the wife he was excited rather than frightened. When it was all over, Tresh offered the couple to collect the ashes, after which they were taken back to the resort. M hurriedly packed her things. The bus to the airport would be in 15 minutes, M wanted to return to the United States as soon as possible. However James had lost his passport, which disrupted their plans. At night, James told the wife to leave without him. Suddenly M said it was disgusting. She couldn't understand how her husband could calmly watch what was being done to his clone. James didn't answer that question, promising to return to the USA at the earliest opportunity. James extended the hotel room booking for a week. At some point he noticed Gabby. When James sorted out the formalities, Gabby approached him and said she was very sorry. James accepted her offer to have a drink. Gabby told him that in the first year, Alban worked here as a consultant for the construction of a new resort. An infinity pool with a glass bottom was installed, one of Alban's projects. But one of the glass panels cracked, leading to the deaths of two workers. The Bowers were arrested and sentenced to capital punishment. That's when they found out about the law of doubles. Gabby advised James to think of it as a gift. As a writer it's a great experience for James. Gabby invited James to their villa, where a few other people who share their little secret would gather. James was introduced to a group of Western tourists, Charles, Jennifer, Dr. Modon and Bex. Each of them had once been convicted of a serious crime and had paid a large sum to have a clone replace them to carry out the sentence. Dr. Modon asked James if he was afraid that he might be the clone, and the real James was no longer alive. James said he wanted to believe that it wasn't the case. He retreated to the restroom and washed his face with cold water to calm down. M tried to call him, but James ignored her calls. His solitude was interrupted by Gabby, who seemed to want to support him. Now James was one of them. He felt tangible pressure in his head. Gabby promised that it would pass soon and asked James to trust her. They returned to the others. Charles, who learned about James's lost passport, promised to use his influential connections. Being without documents in a place like Lee Talca is extremely dangerous. The group proposed one fun game to James, which they regularly played. Today's task was to go to the house on top of the hill where the resort owner lived. It was because of this person that Alban and Gabby were once arrested and sentenced to the highest punishment. And the Bowers couldn't just let it go. Being heavily drunk, James agreed to this adventure. Today they wouldn't limit themselves to moral constraints. Wearing creepy masks, the group arrived at the luxurious mansion of the resort owner. Breaking in, they attacked those who lived here. The people in masks did whatever they wanted, sparing no one. James was involved in this. It's obvious that his new friends return to Lee Talca every year and commit terrible crimes for the opportunity to see their clones pay for these crimes. After taking the lives of all the occupants of the house, the company returned to the resort hotel. One of them was injured. Seeing this, M who never returned to America, screamed in fear. The next morning, they were all arrested and sent to prison. However they weren't scared, knowing for sure that they wouldn't bear any responsibility. Tresh came, stating that their country is not a sandbox for foreigners behaving like children. This time they exhausted the hospitality of the local authorities. The detainees were taken somewhere against their will. Everyone was shouting that they could pay, but no one listened to them. James resisted more desperately than the others, and he was the first to lose his life. It turned out that the real James and everyone else had been sitting here all this time as spectators, applauding. For them it's just a fun game, as clones don't know they are clones. Returning to the hotel, James noticed that his wife was troubled by something. M said she couldn't take it anymore. Their life was turning into madness. 
James didn't stop her. M was planning to return to the USA to her father, leaving her husband alone in a foreign country without a passport. During the day James wearing a mask, sat on the beach. Soon Gabby joined him. James shared that M left him. Gabby thinks it's for the best since M wasn't right for him at all. In her opinion, women like M make men weak. Gabby kissed James. Rain started, which means the monsoon season is approaching. Gabby offered James a special hallucinogenic of plant origin. Its use is associated with religion, so it is considered something sacred. Like under hypnosis, James did everything Gabby told him to do. While in an altered state of consciousness, James and Gabby did things far beyond the bounds of morality. The others from their company joined them. It was unclear what was true and what was merely a product of imagination. The next morning everyone was feeling unwell and disrupting public order in the hotel restaurant. Charles told James that he had spoken to his influential relative about the passport. Apparently Detective Thresh was involved, who probably hopes James will still bring income to the police bank. The group decided to retaliate against the detective. They knew for sure that Tresh would be at the clinic for injections tonight and headed there. Tresh was kidnapped and taken out of the clinic straight on a hospital gurney. At the villa, the group continued to use the hallucinogen. James clearly overdid it with this, but he didn't stop and even drank alcohol on top of it. Gabby told James to show everyone his power. James clearly enjoyed causing pain to Tresh. Either it wasn't James but rather his hidden self that emerged under the influence of the substance. Gabby watched it with satisfaction. At some point, she showed everyone the face of the detective, which had been covered until that moment. It turned out that all this time it wasn't Tresh here, but a clone of James. Feeling unwell, James ran away and locked himself in another room. These people managed to convince him of something that wasn't real. But for what purpose? Looking out the window, James saw his so-called friends, wearing masks, singing outside the house. Suddenly Gabby knocked on the door, saying they paid for the clone just to play a prank on him. James didn't open the door, and in a state of shock said nothing. Gabby called him a coward. Under the sink, James found his passport. His mind cleared completely. The next morning, James was going to go to the airport to leave this wild country forever. But on the way to the airport, James noticed those people chasing the bus. At some point they started shooting, and the bus stopped. James didn't move, hoping those people would leave him alone. Then Gabby addressed the bus driver and passengers, stating that if they didn't turn James Foster over to them, they would suffer. James had no choice but to get off the bus. Gabby continuing to drink, called him worthless and said that all this time they had been joking about him. James was just another way for them to have fun. Gabby also claimed that she hadn't read his book. In her opinion, he writes nonsense that nobody buys anyway. Hearing this, James barely contained his emotions. When Gabby accidentally dropped the bottle of wine, James attacked her and tried to take the gun, but the others intervened. Taking advantage of the commotion, James ran into the woods. Disappointed Gabby fired several shots, wounding him in the leg. James fell, but despite the injury he got up, and limping continued walking. He was ready for anything just to avoid being caught by Gabby and her friends. By nightfall James reached a farm and fainted. After some time he regained consciousness. A local family took care of him. Suddenly Myro's son approached him, smiling eerily, and deprived him of oxygen. It turned out to be another hallucination. James woke up again and started calling out to anyone, but no one responded. When James went outside, the headlights of several cars turned on. Gabby and her friends found him. She stated that they were here to help him. Tonight James must find out what he really is. Gabby ordered to bring the dog. It turned out to be about James's clone. Gabby explained that the dog is needed to complete the transformation. Only when James gets rid of his doppelganger can he let go of the past in which he lived in pretense. James refused to do it. Gabby said it was for his own good, which angered James. Suddenly the clone attacked him, and a fight ensued between them. James had to take his clone's life because only one of them had to survive. When it was all over Gabby hugged James, comforting him. Now he was one of them. In the morning, James called his wife and said he would be on the next flight. He also apologized to M. Maybe things could still get better. The tourists as if nothing had happened, boarded the bus to the airport. They talked about work, hobbies and family routine, while James was depressed and traumatized. Alban and Gabby who now looked like an ordinary couple, wished James good luck. Watching tourists at the airport, James realizes that any of them could be not who they appear to be. Boarding for the flight was announced, but James never left, returning back to the resort. The monsoon season had begun. In the final scene we see James, looking aloof, was sitting alone in the pouring rain. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel not to miss more exciting new products. Also the authors will be pleased if you leave your opinion in the comments.